another application is accelerator driven system so here you need a uh, high intensity accelerator high energy and high intensity accelerator typically 1 gv proton accelerator so this uh, proton beam goes and hits on a target and by spallation uh, reaction it produces lots of neutrons so and then there is a subcritical reactor here so there is a reactor which is subcritical so what do you mean by subcritical subcritical means that it cannot sustain the chain reaction on its own its k effective is less than 1 okay so if the k effective of a reactor is less than 1 then the chain reaction dies and uh, there will be no more uh, fission in the reactor so normally uh, reactors are operated at k effective equal to 1 if k effective is greater than 1 then it is like a bomb so this reactor is subcritical and on its own it cannot sustain chain reaction in order to sustain uh, for this chain reaction to go on and to sustain the fission reaction additional neutrons are provided by the accelerator so this proton 1 gv proton beam from the uh, accelerator hits a spallation target and lots of neutrons are produced so the deficit of neutrons in the reactor is provided by this accelerator so then this reactor can normally be used for electricity production a part of this uh, goes to the grid and part of it can be used to drive this accelerator so this type of uh, system has various advantages it can use thorium as fuel okay so in india we have a huge amount of thorium reserves okay so uh, in a direct uh, reactor you cannot use thorium as fuel because thorium is fertile it is not fissile it has to be converted into uranium uh, in order to put it in a reactor but this type of uh, uh, this type of system it can be used directly so here it will be converted into the uh, the fertile material can be converted into the fissile material and be used okay so greater safety in operation because if anything goes wrong you can simply switch off the accelerator and the reactor on its own is subcritical so chain reaction will die down it can also be used for incineration of radioactive waste so uh, when the reactor operates lot of radioactive waste is generated so there are long lived fission products which have lifetimes uh, of the order of millions of years so which is very huge so generally these are stored in geological repositories but uh, millions of years is too huge a lifetime so if you treat it to this type of um, in this type of system you can reduce the lifetime to some thousands of years so it helps that way and here whatever the power is generated part of it is going for uh, going to the grid and part of it is going back to the accelerator so in this way it is a self the accelerator is uh, self sustained so that is why it is known as an energy amplifier okay so such a system many people are working on it but uh, so far it doesn't exist uh, in the world so the main challenges are from the accelerator type because it needs to work in the cw uh, mode so we learn about what is the meaning of cw mode so in the lectures high beam powers are required and the system has to be highly reliable okay so uh, since this is going to be uh, used for uh, production of electricity the system has to be uh, very reliable it has to work 24 cross 7 for months okay unlike the other accelerators which are used for probably doing some experiments and uh, they need not uh, work for such la large uh, durations without uh, any fault so here reliability is very important so for these reasons no such accelerator work uh, is working in the world but uh, work is going on for uh, designing and building such an accelerator then uh, very quickly let me tell you about some linear accelerators in india so there is this electron beam uh, processing facility at uh, rr cat at uh, indore uh, madhya pradesh so this is used for all medical applications agricultural industrial applications which i have already discussed before there is a similarly there is a 10 mev linac at the electron beam center in khagar uh, which is a vrc center which is used for industrial application so the main applications here are radiation food processing cross linking of uh, polymers x-ray source for cargo scanning 
neutron force for radiography, semiconductor radiation, then curing of adhesives, diamond coloring, medical sterilization, and food disinfestations. Then there is this Lehipa at BRC, which is like a front end for the Indian ADS system. So as I said, when I was discussing about the accelerator driven system, it requires a very high energy accelerator, a 1 GeV accelerator, a high power accelerator. So you cannot build this in one go. It will, so it's planned to build it in three phases. In the first phase, a 20 MeV high current accelerator is being built at uh, BRC. So this consists of an ion source, a radio frequency quadrupole accelerator and a drift tube linear. So here is the picture of the LIPA at uh, BRC. So here you can see this is the RF tube. So you learn more about the structures during this course. This is the drift tube linear. So this is still in commissioning stage. <coughs> then there is this uh, radioactive ion beam facility at uh, VCC Kolkata. So here the cyclotron produces uh, cyclotron produces uh, proton or alpha beam which is hit on a target and radioactive ion beams are produced. So this radioactive ion beams are further accelerated using radio, uh, RFQ and IH details to high energies for doing experiments. So here is a picture of the RIB facility. So this is the RFQ and this is the IH type DTL. Okay, they are also used as post accelerators to accelerate beams from uh, the Pelletron at IUAC and TFR. So at, uh, at IUAC in New Delhi and at TFR in uh, Mumbai, we have the Pelletron 14 and 14, 15 uh, million volt uh, tandem accelerator. So the energy, as you know, in a DC accelerator is limited. If you want to increase the energy uh, of the beams coming out from the uh, Pelletron accelerator. So here post accelerator consisting of quarter wave resonators have been installed. Okay, So here is a picture of the cryostat. So these are superconducting accelerators. So, uh, so using this post accelerators, the energy of the uh, beam coming from the uh, Pelletron accelerator can be increased. Okay, let's talk about some accelerators in the world. So, as I said, there is this LINAC 4 at CERN, okay, which is uh, and the injector to the proton synchrotron booster. So, this big green that you can see here, this is the LHC. So you do not directly accelerate to 7 TV, you do it in stages. So the LINAC-4 is a linear accelerator. It's a 160 MeV H- minus accelerator. It accelerates to 160 MeV and then the beam is injected into the proton synchrotron booster, then the proton synchrotron and then this beam is injected into the SPS and finally the LHC. So it's a, it's a huge accelerator and uh, you can see a picture of it here. Uh, similarly, another example of injector to synchrotron is at the Spallation Neutron Source uh, in the United States. So this is a 1 GeV uh, proton accelerator. So here is a 1 GeV proton accelerator finally injecting into a proton accumulator ring. So this part is a linear accelerator. And then again here the protons are uh, hit on a target and by Spallation reaction neutrons are produced and these neutrons are now used for doing experiments. So this is uh, not a CW machine, this is a pulsed machine. So, so it's not suitable for ADS. So here is a picture of the uh, linear accelerator of the SNS. Then there is the European XFEL. So this is a huge accelerator consisting of large superconducting cavities and uh, it is there in Germany. Okay, now let's learn about uh, some basic concepts that are required. <clears throat> so as you have seen that here we are dealing with high kinetic, uh, so we are dealing with high velocities or and here if you see the kinetic energies, they, uh, they are of the order of rest mass of the particles. Okay, so Newtonian mechanics does not apply here. We need to go to relativistic mechanics. Okay, so uh, let's 
quickly revise what what is involved in relativistic mechanics. So here we define two dimensionless uh, parameters, beta and gamma. So beta is simply v by c. So here c is the velocity of light and it is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Remember, as per the relativistic mechanics, no nothing can move with a velocity greater than the velocity of light. So beta is simply v by c, it's a dimensionless uh, quantity. Gamma is defined in terms of uh, beta, it is 1 upon under root of 1 minus beta square. So again from this you can write gamma in terms of beta. Now in relativistic uh, mechanics, the total energy is given as the sum of the rest mass energy and the kinetic energy which is given as gamma into moc square. So moc square is the rest mass energy of the particle. So uh, when particles, so what do you mean by rest mass energy? When particles are at rest, so that means v is equal to 0 or in other words beta is equal to 0 and gamma is equal to 1. Okay, so your kinetic energy is 0, this kinetic energy is 0. You are left with only this part of the energy. So your total energy is then equal to the rest mass energy E is equal to E0 is equal to MOC square. Okay, so gamma can be written as E by E0, okay, which is simply some 1 plus E kinetic by E0, where E0 is equal to the rest mass energy. Now mass of the proton as you know is given by 1.67 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg okay and similarly mass of the electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. So uh, here you can note that mass of the proton is 2000 times the mass of the electron. So electron is a light particle. So you can calculate the rest uh, mass energy in terms of uh, electron volt. Uh, for both proton and electron and uh, so it's equal to 938.27 for MeV for protons and 0.511 MeV for electrons. Okay, So uh, now when the kinetic energy is of the same order then the particles become relativistic and the Newtonian mechanics will not apply. Okay, So here in uh, in relativistic mechanics, the mass also does not remain constant. It is given by gamma times MO, where MO is the rest mass. The total energy is given as E is equal to mc square. So this everybody is familiar with. It's the famous expression given by Einstein that energy and mass are interchangeable. So energy is basically now here the sum of the rest mass energy and any additional energy that it would have acquired which is known as the kinetic energy. So this is equal to gamma MOC square. So gamma MO you can replace by MO. So this is MC square. Okay. So this mass is no longer constant. MO is constant but M is no longer constant. So from here you can write kinetic energy as gamma minus 1 MOC square. Similarly the momentum is given by gamma MOV. Now V you can write it as beta C. So beta gamma MOC and uh, this you can replace in terms of the rest mass energy. So this is the expression for the momentum in terms of rest mass energy and using this you can easily derive this expression for total energy and momentum. Okay, so let's compare the uh, various regions where the Newtonian mechanics and the relativistic mechanics apply. So this, you are familiar with this formula from Newtonian mechanics, kinetic energy is simply half mv square. You can write v as beta c, so half m beta square c square. So beta from Newtonian mechanics comes out to be in terms of kinetic energy 2 ek by e0 under root. Now if I plot this, so here is the kinetic energy with beta for the case of Newtonian mechanics. So I get this graph okay? and this is the line for V is equal to C. So you know that no particle can move with a velocity greater than the velocity of light. Okay? So this is violating the uh, 
this is violating the law that no particle can move with a velocity greater than the velocity of light. Okay, so and now if I calculate from relativistic mechanics, okay, so here gamma is given by e by e0 which is simply 1 plus ek by e0. So and gamma from uh, in terms of beta I can write it in this expression. Combining these two expressions the relate uh, beta for relativistic mechanics in terms of the kinetic energy comes out to be this. So it is very simple to derive this you can do this using these two expressions. So now again if I plot this kinetic uh, the uh, variation of beta with kinetic energy for the relativistic mechanics this is the curve that I get. So we see here that at, as the energy increases, the uh, beta increases and finally it approaches the velocity of light. It will never become equal to the velocity of light but it approaches the velocity of light. Okay, so this is the more generalized case which always holds true. In the lower energy region you can see that both the curves overlap. The, both the Newtonian, uh, the Newtonian curve and the relativistic curve both overlap. So in this region the Newtonian mechanics apply. So Newtonian, uh, the Newtonian mechanics is only valid in this region whereas the relativistic mechanics is a general formula and is valid everywhere. So typically in the region where your gamma is equal to uh, approximately close to 1 is the region where mechanics, uh, Newtonian mechanics holds true. So here I have just calculated the values of beta and gamma for proton and electron for different values of kinetic energy. So remember these are kinetic energies, these are not the total energies. Okay, so uh, and I have plotted this, uh, in this graph here. So here you can see that the electron, for the electron the even at 5 MeV it has come, the beta has become uh, equal to 0.99 so it is very close to the velocity of light. Now if the energy is increasing to 100 MeV, 1 GeV there is very minor change in the value of beta. Okay, So in other words the velocity of the electron has become constant as can be seen in this graph here. So even around 1 MeV the velocity of the electron has become constant approaching the velocity of light. For the proton on the other hand, if you see the beta from 50 kV, from 50 kV to 1 GeV, it has still not reached uh, 0.99 or uh, close to the velocity of light. Okay, So this is because of the difference in the masses of the proton and electron. So the mass of the electron is or the rest mass energy is 0.511 here and here it is 938 MeV. Okay, so uh, the proton will become relativistic or in other words it will approach the velocity of light at a higher velocity, uh, higher kinetic energy because its mass is more. The electron on the other hand being a lighter particle becomes relativistic at relatively lower energies. Okay, so uh, now what happens here now when you accelerate the particle from uh, let us say 1 MeV to 1 GeV, the velocity is not changing much. The velocity is almost constant for the electron. What is changing here is the mass because gamma is changing. If you look at the values of gamma for the electron, there is a huge change in the value of gamma. So here you know that mass is equal to gamma MO. So now as kinetic energy is increasing, the velocity is not increasing for the electron or increasing very minor. What is increasing is the mass of the electron. Okay, the same thing will happen with the proton. So in this energy range you do not see, you, uh, see much change in the value of gamma for proton. So the same thing will happen when it becomes relativistic beyond 1 g. Okay, so electron becomes relativistic very fast as compared to the proton due to its smaller mass. Once it becomes relativistic, the beta becomes almost constant or in other words, its velocity is almost constant as kinetic energy increases. Then once it becomes relativistic, gamma changes or in other words, its mass increases. Okay, so notice that for the uh, proton till 5 MeV, the gamma is just 1. So in this region it is non-relativistic 
and for uh, for the proton here the newtonian mechanics will also apply at these energy ranges whereas not so for the electron okay so this differences between the uh, proton and electron it has important implications in the design of the linax for both proton and electron or you can say electron and heavy ion for heavy ion this curve will be maybe something like this depending on what is the charge particle you are accelerating okay so uh, as we learn about acceleration using rf fields we'll come back to this and see that how the acceleration for electrons and protons or ions are different okay now let's calculate the force on a charged particle so being charged particles they will respond only to electric fields and magnetic fields okay so uh, you know from the lorentz force the force acting on a charged particle is given as q into e plus v cross b okay this force will do work on the charged particle and change its kinetic energy now from work energy theorem okay the net work done by the forces on an object that equals to the change in the kinetic energy okay so work done is what f dot ds which is the change in the kinetic energy let us calculate the rate of change of kinetic energy so this is dek by dt which is simply d f dot ds by dt and this force if i substitute from the lorentz force here this is what i get okay so ds by dt is v so q e dot v plus q v cross b dot v this term goes to zero and i am left with q e dot v so now notice that the rate of change of kinetic energy depends only upon the electric field the magnetic field does not change the kinetic energy of the charged particles only the electric field changes the kinetic energy of the charged particles okay that to when there is a component of electric field in the direction of the velocity of the charged particle if e is perpendicular to v this goes to zero again no uh, change in the energy so when there is a component of electric field in the direction of the velocity of the charged particle electric fields will produce acceleration so only electric fields can be used for increasing the energy of the charged particles so though the uh, charged particles will respond to both electric field and magnetic field only electric fields can be used for increasing the energy of the charged particles for acceleration by electric fields there must be a component of electric field in the direction of motion of the charged particle so this is a necessary condition for acceleration by using electric field so uh, let's see the forces due to magnetic field magnetic field as uh, we saw do not increase the kinetic energy of the charged particles they only change the trajectory they can be used for changing the trajectory okay so they can be used for bending they can be used for deflecting focusing so here is the picture of a quadrupole magnet so we learn more about it so this is used for focusing the beam so a beam is just like a ray of light okay it tends to diverge like this so uh, if it is not brought back okay using some kind of focusing this beam will keep on diverging and get lost so quadrupoles are used for focusing the beam then there is a dipole magnet the dipole magnet is used for bending the beam Okay. so magnetic fields can be used for bending focusing deflecting electric fields can change the kinetic energy so they can be used for acceleration provided there is a component of electric field in the direction of motion of the charged particles and in addition to this they can also be used for focusing deflection okay in addition to acceleration they can be used for both focusing and deflection so here is a picture of a drift tube linear this is used for acceleration we will see more about it in the course then if you apply a, a electric field perpendicular to the direction of motion of the charged particle you see that it will deflect the beam like this so they can be used for deflecting focusing as well as acceleration okay let's compare the electric field and magnetic field for focusing so we have seen they can both be used for focusing let's compare uh, what Uh, the both the electric and magnetic fields so again coming back to the lorentz force the force on the charged particle is q e plus q v cross b so out of this this is the force due to the magnetic field and this is the force on the charged particle due to the electric field okay now let's say 
we have a charged particle moving with a velocity close to the velocity of light. So a relativistic particle, let's say. So it's moving with a velocity close to the velocity of light. So now if I calculate the force on that charged particle due to the magnetic field, it is simply Q C into B. Okay, C by C because it's moving with a velocity close to the velocity of light. Now let's say magnetic field is equal to 1 Tesla, which is like a reasonable field and it can be reasonably achieved. So the force acting uh, on the charged particle due to this magnet is simply now Q into C. Now let's say if I want to get the same amount of force using electric field. Okay, So Fe is equal to Qe and I want to produce the same amount of field as due to this magnetic field. So I put it equal to Qc. Okay, And now if I calculate from here the value of the electric field. Okay, So uh, here we will get E is equal to C and C is 3 into 10 to the power of 8. Okay, so this is like 300 million volts per, per meter. So it's not possible to achieve an electric field as high as this. Okay, now however, if we are working with a low velocity particle, okay, say uh, moving with a velocity 1% the speed of light. Okay, in this case, if you calculate, if you do the same calculations here, okay, so instead of C here, you will have 0 0.01 C. Okay, instead of C here, you will have 0 0.01 C. So your electric field will come out to be 3 million volts per meter, which is like a reasonable number. Okay, so magnetic field is more efficient for focusing at higher velocities. At lower velocities, you can use both electric fields and magnetic fields for focusing. However, at higher velocities, magnetic field is more efficient for focusing. So let me just summarize today's lecture, whatever we have learned. When particles have energies comparable to their rest mass energies, relativistic mechanics will apply. So you have to use relativistic mechanics, relativistic formulae in that case. You should uh, not calculate the kinetic energy using half mv square. Okay, You have to use relativistic mechanics. Light particles like electrons, they become relativistic at lower values of kinetic energies. Once the velocity reaches the velocity of light, the velocity becomes almost constant and mass increases as the energy increases, as we have seen. Magnetic fields cannot increase the energy of the charged particles, okay, so they can be used only for focusing and bending the beam. The electric fields, they are used for acceleration of the beam, focusing and deflection. So for acceleration, we have to use only electric fields. Magnetic fields cannot be used for acceleration okay and necessary condition for acceleration is that we have to have a component of electric field in the direction of motion of the charged particle at high velocity magnetic fields are more efficient for focusing than electric fields now with this introduction in the next lecture we'll actually see how acceleration is done using time varying 